Hey, how's it going? This is Tyson with The Rock Channel, and this is Victor. And we are doing our fourth interview of the night. This is actually with a guy who made it all happen. And what is your name, sir? Jason Schuler. Hell yeah. And you are with, I believe, RIP. I am with RIP. Is that production, RIP Productions. Yeah, right. Relentless the Pursuit Productions. Uh, there's three of us. There's Jeremy Bryant, JD Inc., and I'm the new guy. Uh, just came on uh, a couple months ago. I've been doing some things all summer, and then we kind of just joined forces. And Hell yeah. The sky is the limit from here. Hell yeah, dude. Are you from Kansas City? Yeah, born and raised. Okay. Um, well, basically, our interview has to switch up a little bit because this is based on towards bands. But we want to get promoters in there. We want to get sound guys in there because not many people know what goes on behind the scenes. And I think it's a vital part because if it wasn't for you, these fuckers wouldn't be on stage here. So, our first question of the night is, what are your top three bands? Local or national? Any. Dead, alive, any bands. Like what? Like Or musician. Musician. It all, it all started for me... Disturbed was was where it started. Fuck yeah, dude. And then uh, uh, of course corn, corn, and uh, and then lately uh, my boys in Hollow Point they're out in St. Louis. It's good. They're the ones that okay. Uh, kind of re restarted my fire. You talked about us coming and interviewing them uh, yes. coming up. So when they'll, is that coming up? They'll be in town uh, March 11th. It's the reschedule from the big birthday bash we had. Mother Nature was being a bitch, so we had to get yeah. that show. Um, I'm still, I'm real proud of that show. Real proud of these guys. I got uh, Hollow Point coming from St. Louis, along with a band called Through the Scope. Okay. They're, uh, if you're Slipknot fan, you're gonna like Hell these yeah. guys. They're like Slipknot on crack, but the good kind of crack. <laughs> these guys are really. They're good, good kind of crack. This is their uh, first show outside of St. Louis anywhere. Okay. But these guys are, are they're, they're phenomenal. The whole. I'm partial to St. Louis a little bit because I travel down there quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. And um, we're bringing a lot of their heavy hitters up here in the, in the, in the spring, and, and uh, it's, it's been a good year. Dude, for sure. Fuck yeah, dude. Cool. So, a little more specific than bands. What are your favorite albums? Albums? I, I gotta go with... Um, I gotta go with Appetite for Destruction. Okay. Yeah. Or the Use Your Illusion versions. Um, okay. Uh, it's a tough one, I know. It, 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 there's so many. I, I mean, it, go. see, I, I start thinking in my head of newer stuff that I'm listening to now, but then you don't think about, like, what you grew up on. Like, what did you grow up on? Like, what was your favorite album? DC's Back in Black. No, oh, that's the second one of Night. Yeah, uh, believe it or not, who was that? Uh, the band that just played. Uh, was it? No, in the very first band, Sour Apple Surgery. Yes. Sour Apple Surgery. Uh, the guitar is back in black. From my neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and then third, if you're going, I mean, we're going way, way, way back. I mean, um, I'm, I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna say Journey. The, oh yeah, dude. The old, the Steve Perry old classic Journey stuff. I grew cool. some of the older stuff. I gotta so. respect that. That's that. That that's going back, man. I, I love that stuff. I love that that. God, when they, they can put out vocals like that, man. That you don't see vocals like that nowadays. The only person that's hitting close to those vocals nowadays, I would say, is the lead singer of Shinedown. He can hit those '80s vocals that not many groups can. Like you got to scream in there, but. What does that do? You know, right. ice cream, trust me, I do. Ask this motherfucker. But if you can throw out that voice that just transcends to the audience, you know? Right. It's very hard to do now. I, I think it's the. Pinnell's done a great job. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But Steve Perry makes journeys. So. Are you talking about the new lead singer? The, yeah. the dude from. Uh, where is he from? The little guy from. He's been from like a third world years. country. Yeah, like, he's been, been with him for a few years. But you know what I'm talking about? Nope. Okay, Journey, uh, they, they just recently on YouTube searched for a new lead singer, and it's some tiny guy yeah, from a third world country. Really, yeah, really. And they saw him on nice. YouTube, and he's doing these small little clubs, and uh, it's like somewhere in South America or something, right? 
So I'm like, I, I want to say the Philippines or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could be wrong. But, yeah, like a poverty-stricken but, area. He's done a good job, at, dude. You, got, you know, it's not Van Halen without without Van Halen. It's not. I'm going to get some slack over this. I wasn't alive to see Randy Rhodes. Yeah. So Zach is Ozzy for me. Yeah. And and Zach is probably the great. I, I believe to be. One of the great, greatest, if not the greatest guitar player of my generation. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take some slack over that, but that's just my opinion. Doesn't make it right, but just branching off. Who do you think? Who's your favorite drummer of all time? Oh, uh, I gotta go with Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl. Okay. Well, I, I respect it from Nirvana to what he is now, but he's not a drummer now. But still, coming from a drummer and then becoming one of the world's biggest bands—that's nuts, you know. Who would be your favorite drummer, being a drummer yourself, Victor? Gavin Harrison from Porcupine Tree. Porcupine Tree. Have you ever heard of Porcupine Tree? No, I have not. They're a British band. Uh, sort of progressive metal or whatever, but that guy is by far blows Mike Portnoy from Dream Theater out of the water, blows a lot of people. There, there's a lot of up and coming locals, and it's, I got um, the, the, the kid that plays drums for, for Point. His name's Chris the Seymour. Yeah. He's. He's on. He's, he's wait till you see this motherfucker right here. I'm telling you, I can't, his, I can't wait. Dude, his rack is the fucking size of yeah, Danny Carey from fucking Tool, yeah, dude. You guys are gonna be here dude I'm telling weeks. you, his drum set will fill up that whole stage. I'm not even kidding you, dude. That's nice. And you know, most people that do that, they don't usually use the drums that are up there. Right. Like this motherfucker uses every single one. Wait till you hear his solo. Have you talking about big drum kits? Have you seen um, Terry Bullets boy from Electro Possum? <laughs> Who? Electro Poss and the homeboy, the drummer from I've, them. They're playing here sometime, right? Yeah, they're coming up. They're, his bass drum is... Oh! I mean, it's like... Yeah. They're shit? Nice. They're shit. It's nice. the biggest thing I've ever seen. That's crazy, it's stupid, dude. dude. Hell yeah. That's amazing. All right, moving on. Uh, we have to ask this one question, and we are on the fence tonight. Okay, Star Trek or Star Wars? Star Wars. Them. Not oh. one, not one. Four people, four interviews, all stars. Thank you, man. That's not even He's close. Star Trek. Okay, I like Star Trek, but I like the new movies. I don't like I the old stuff. I, I never I don't like the new movies. I, I, I like never, never got into the Star Trek stuff. I, my dad loved it, and he tried to press it on me, and I think it's why I straight away, it's because he tried, you know, your parents, they try to press something on you, you don't want it. So, I love Star Wars, but, I don't know, Star Trek, the new, I like right, the new Star Trek. Right, right. But, I'm wanting to watch the old Star Trek now that I'm older. It's funny that Star Trek has the cult following it has, because it wasn't on TV very long at all. Really? Well, there's a short-lived the, series. The original series was the Next Generation, right, right, Patrick right. Stewart, whatever. Right, that's true. Yeah, I mean, who, seven seasons. Who doesn't love yeah. William Shatner, man? Come on. Well, yeah, that's yeah. true. But the Patrick Stewart, uh, how long was that on for? Seven seasons. And was it better than the original? I think so. Okay. Cool. I mean, the original was a little too old even for me, so I'm. Uh, I mean, the the golden era, I would think, is the Next Generation. Fuck yeah, Plus dude. the movies with the old guys, with William Shatner and the What was that one? The, the, the famous one, Nemesis. Nemesis. Well, Nemesis, yeah, but I'm talking about you know the search for Spock and you know like. I'm saying Nemesis the, because it was the better graphic movies when they started moving into the better graphics. Yeah, but see, I mean, Star Trek was never about effects and graphics. Yeah, it was yeah. About the story. Star Wars was more about effects and graphics. Well, when they threw in effects and graphics, that's when I started watching. Yeah, and that's when I started doing Which could have been the reason for the, the old series, because the technology had come so far, maybe yeah. being yeah. updated. And, and I know they're, they're back on the TV, so everybody watches them. I like that old stuff. I go back, like, I'm, I'm in the middle of watching All in the Family right now for back in the day. All in the and Family. I think my wife's watching that. She's watching that one Mama's Family. Mama's, Mama, what's that old lady who's not old? Jennifer! Oh, she went outside. It's in the no, old. I like the old, like, you know, like, the Dukes of Hazzard stuff like that. Golden the Girls. Yeah, Betty White, man, she's awesome. She is awesome. I'm going to put her on my, if I make it one famous one day, I'm going to put her on my writer. One way or another, just cause. Dude, she's fucking awesome. Betty White, she's a legend. Yeah. What are your future goals? 
where do you want to get to in the next, I don't know, year to five Whether years? Whether it be in this industry, what you're doing I'm now. I'm still or... um, digesting this last eight to nine months. It's been a blur. Yeah, yeah. Um, luckily, I've, I've gotten some opportunities that that uh, people have worked years to get. I've been pretty lucky. Um, our, our goal at RIP is to, is to to just keep growing and growing and 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 hopefully maybe hit the national scene someday, book some of these national acts. And, That'll be awesome. And um, our, our goal is to change. Though I, I I think I can speak for for Jeremy and JD. We want to change the way things are done. I mean, it, it's the scene has has grown, has stopped, it fluctuates up yeah. and down. We want to build that scene. We want to be a part of it. And we want to to show people that you can put on shows and and you can take care of the bands and and everybody's happy and and just kind of change the scene. They'll get these get the bands to be on the same page with yep. one another instead of you know we don't like this band or we won't play with that band or or all that. You know, we unite this and 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 build a scene and. And, and it's going to take you know all the promoters working together and all the bands working together and to, to put Kansas City on the map. We have some great local talent here, and and, and um, it's, it's obvious when I travel. I travel quite a bit to St. Louis. The shows down there are great, but this, this, there's a clear disparity of yeah, the yeah. scene down there and it is here. And we, and we want to build that here and we, but we want to do it the right way it's like you were saying earlier uh trying to eliminate the pay to play yeah i'm i'm <laughs> i'm not a pay to play fan i know that, that my partners aren't either i understand the concept and i get it but there's and and that's works and that's great and that's the way the standards been and i'm okay with that but that doesn't mean that i can't change it or maybe i have a better idea yeah. and it doesn't mean that we're right but but um when when our bands leave leave our stage, we want them happy. We do not, you know. And, and if there's something wrong, um, case in point, we had a, a national tour come through here that we didn't book. It was an outside booking agent. Some things got messed up, mm -hmm. and um, the, the the band wasn't going to play. I, I knocked on the RV door and I was like, "What's it going to take to unfuck this?" It took me five minutes. We unfucked it, they played, and now they're reaching out and wanting to come back. So that's just what we're going to do, total. Hell total yeah, support yeah. means total support. Yeah. Whether it's from the show, if, if you get a five tire on the way home, I'm going to come help you. Can you say what band that was? Messer. Messer. And Atticane out of uh, Texas. Hell yeah, dude. I've heard of that band. Fuck yeah, dude. So, well, that, I mean... That's it, a very yeah. cool way to look at things. Well, and, and, and you know, people are going to be like, oh, well, they have an ego. It wasn't ego at all. Things were supposed to be done and that weren't, and I understand that. And and um, these I get guys it. are put, putting their heart and souls into their music and stuff. They shouldn't have to fuck with stupid shit like that. On the well, road. when you, you you have a booking agent and a tour manager that's supposed to handle these flyers and books these, um, they need to handle it. And that's the, that's one of the the, the other things that we're, we're different at RIP. Um, you'll see myself. Yeah. Um, if I don't have a show, I'm at other shows. Yep. Like JD and Jeremy will run shows here, and if, if they don't need me, I'm at other shows supporting these bands, no matter where they are. Doesn't matter what venue, doesn't matter who booked it, I'm out there supporting these bands. Jeremy Jeremy is the same, JD is the same. I mean, obviously, um, Jeremy has a lot of stuff going on here. Yeah. He can't get out there as much as he would like to, mm -hmm. but I know that his heart's in the right place, and he would be there right with me if it was possible, but somebody, gotta be the circus master and you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely and, um, it's, it's not just you don't just show up to a show and music comes out of those speakers yeah and yeah. and it's a, it, it's stressful at times and and um, jeremy's brain never stops he's constantly working he's one of the hardest working guys i know out there jd as well myself it, it's you know coming off the hills of the big new year's eve show with, with the mojo moji guys the collective soul yeah, yeah. guys um, that was a real stressful time, and of course, mm -hmm. Mother Nature messing with some shows. You know, it, it was stressful, but there's a lot of stuff that goes into putting on these shows that that, that you don't see, and, and there's there's always drama or something or this or that, and, <laughs> yeah. you know. But the bottom line is, we're going to come. 
and we're gonna put on the show. We're gonna put the best the best bands on the stage, and you know we're gonna you know we're gonna put the bands that want to work for it put them on the stage. Yeah, yeah. We will, there's not a band in town we won't put on stage. There's not a band in town we won't work with, regardless, because we all have our personal feelings towards this band or that. Doesn't matter. We're gonna be professional and we're gonna put on a show. Fuck yeah, dude. So I, I have to ask this: what, Which would be your dream artist to book that you would like to have at least once? Band? What would I yeah. like band-wise? Yeah. No, guys. What would be your dream lineup show? Oh, that's what I'd say. Okay. With the headliner being your favorite. We really Fair enough. want you to come to the bar right now. That's a toughie. Man, that I, I, I'm kind of a weird because I like a variety. So yeah, yeah. Make it a variety, so, dude. Fuck it. I'm going to say the, the one band if I could book would be Queen with Freddie Mercury. One of them. They had to be on that bill. Freddie Mercury, Queen. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, I love that. That's fucking amazing. Okay, mix that with modern. I hope you enjoyed your Disturbed's got to be on there. Okay. I think Disturbed would love that. Actually. Rob Zombie's got to be on there. I, I'm a big fan of Rob. I think that would be an amazing concert. Um, Queen, Rob Zombie, and Disturbed. Who's the local opener act? Not local, but can be local, but who's opening up for them? Hollow Point, no doubt. Okay. Hollow okay. Point, Queen, Disturbed, and uh, Rob Zombie. Let's see if we can make that happen. But Except I'm selfish because yes. I throw a couple more locals on there. But that's just me. There you go. Tyrant Son. Tyrant Son, yes, yes. Has to be on that. <laughs> but the Queen, we have to we have to just, uh, compromise and do a tribute band. But we can make this happen still. <laughs> Well, I did, Adam Lambert does. He's done a real good job filling it. I mean, nobody's gonna take a place. Wait, like Adam, yeah, Adam Lambert did? Yeah, he did. Queen? Yeah, yeah. He did. He did a couple of tours with him, and he actually it, it, it works. No shit. I did not know that. You know, That's fucking nuts. All right, uh, we have our last question of the night. As you can see, the bar is closing down. Did, who who sang that? Semisonic. Closing, Closing time. time. You don't have to go home, but you can't okay. stay here. What is your crazy one-time story? You could be at a show as a fan. You could be a promoter. You could be on stage. What is the craziest fucking one-time story you have ever had? And it can be the dirtiest, vulgarest. I got one. All right, man. I, I got one I can't can't broadcast, but I've got one I can. Um, All right. <laughs> I'm going to get the other one from this, you next time. This interview. metal journey started for me. I got a younger brother. We're five years apart. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he's in his senior year of high school. Now I don't know enough to drink yet. Okay. But big brother is. Second concert he ever went to is Oscars. And you gotta think, this is, oh, a sand, this is Sandstone back in the day. Yeah, yeah. There's probably 10, 12,000 people drinking in the parking lot, right? Well, my brother's been drinking on the way out there. Yeah. My mom's gonna kill me. And he's in high school. He's in high, yeah. He's in high school. <laughs> yeah. But he's a senior year. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. Um, or I just graduated, maybe. I don't know the whole, but I know it was right around that time period. 12,000 people in the parking lot drinking. My brother wasn't even drinking at this time, but I stopped to tie my shoe and handed my brother my beer. And out of the 10,000 people in the parking lot, he's the one that got the ticket. <laughs> they wrote him a minor in possession ticket. Really? And, oh and he wasn't God. even drinking at that point. He was done drinking, but the cops were like, ah, you're already, I know you're drunk. So we're just getting. Like, you had the beer in your hand. And I'm like, I'm about to tell the cop, hey, that, he's like, do not tell me you're handing in this beer because if I, you do, you're getting a ticket. Like, what? Oh, no, that's all him, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, are you taking him to jail? You're writing him a ticket. And my brother goes, what do you mean? I said, well, he's taking him to jail. I'll pick you up after the show. <laughs> Oh. I wasn't busy at Ozfest because this was this was the Ozfest that I believe that, that um, was the year that Dave Williams and Johnny Poe passed away. Right? So oh my gosh, a, that is so, so was, fucking ironic. So this was a big big deal for us to be there because um, yep. I, I I know the Johnny Poe guys and they Dave like, Williams. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, that's the the year he passed away. The year before, like when they were on the peak of their career, you know, 
Uh, they were on the Jägermeister tour and they came here to Kansas yeah, City. Yeah, they played with Haley and Ant Farm and Disturbed at no. Memorial Hall. No, this was, I think, the year before when they played with Cold Chamber and fucking El Nino at Beaumont Club. Ah. Back when Beaumont Club was a Beaumont Club. They played, the one I'm talking about is Twisted Christmas. I was 12, year, 12 or 13 years old, man. That was my first show I ever went Beaumont to. Beaumont is a good, I saw Mudvayne at Beaumont, which is just stupid. Dude, that place is a yeah. fucking riot, dude. Yeah, it was, it's, I can't. Back yeah, in the day, dude, Beaumont. it was fucking nuts. Yeah, it was definitely a place to Dude, it was the first show. place I ever saw where the whole fucking place was a mosh pit. I'm talking about, like, behind the fucking soundboard mosh pit. Just fucking everybody going crazy, dude. Okay, uh, we gotta we gotta wrap this up here. So, all right, thank you. That was really interesting. No, interview. thank you. Thank no, you that, was, you guys that was that was uh, that was that was quite fascinating. You know, if you're a band out there, you're sure. looking for a show, hit RIP up. We'll we'll make it happen. Oh yeah. Um, if we can't, Thanks we'll so find much. we'll we'll find someone who can, or we'll we'll make we'll make it happen. Absolutely, dude. Hell yeah! And All this right. is Tyson and Victor with the Rock Channel. Fuck you guys and good night.